Hit nine, Cold War, Proxy War, Domino Theory, Korean War, Vietnam War, the CIA, and Cuba, a proxy war. A major power instigates but does not participate, even though they technically do participate. A good example of a proxy war is North Korea fighting South Korea. In reality, it was North Korea and the Soviet Union versus South Korea and the United States. North Vietnam versus South Vietnam. Well, actually, that was the North Vietnamese supported by the Soviet Union versus the South Vietnamese heavily supported by the United States. It's a proxy war where we don't necessarily have the U.S. versus the Soviet Union. The two major powers never really go head to head. We fight through other people. Post-1945, remember, Japan had invaded all this land that you see that is red and conquered it. After the war, Japan is kicked out. So who's going to fill the power void in China? Is it going to be the communists under Mao Zedong, who is loved by the peasants and the rice farmers and the low-income Chinese? Or is it going to be the anti-communist? Like what, what do you mean he's an anti-communist? What does he believe in? Well, He's just, he's this guy's enemy. That's that's as good as it gets, Chiang Kai-shek. So they've been feuding for a while. Who's going to take over, the communist or the guy that doesn't like the communist? Obviously, the communist is going to be supported by the Soviet Union. And so we can't support him. We've got to support this guy. Well, what does he believe in? Well, he just doesn't like them. Okay, so the enemy of the enemy is our friend. Well, maybe we should support someone who believes in democracy and individual rights and capitalism. Well, the best that we can do this time is we're going to have to support the guy that doesn't like the other guy that we don't like. So, yeah, we don't pick the right horse, obviously. And Shen Kai-shek will get removed from power and the communists will take over China and China will become communist, totalitarian, and the dominoes are falling. Communism is spreading across the world, just as we predicted. We've got to do something about this. And you can see this map. Here's the Soviet Union, and you can see these countries turning red. The Eastern Europe is turning communist year by year. Now it's spread. The virus has spread into China. Who's next? Before long, we'll all be communists. We've got to stop the dominoes now because the dominoes are falling. Who is next? It's honestly a real fear here. Let's go to Korea. Remember, Japan had invaded all these countries during World War II. After World War II, Japan is kicked out. What do you do with Korea now? Is it going to go to the Soviet Union and the communists, or will America and the democratic capitalists, who will decide Korea's fate? Maybe Korea should decide Korea. Ah, no, 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 no. That's going to be up to the big boys to decide. This is going to lead to an example of a proxy war. So here in North Korea, remember, we were on the same side. When the war is over, the Soviet Union and the U.S. fought together. The Soviet Union and the U.S. fought together to free Korea. So at the end, who's going to decide what happens to Korea? Well, the Soviet Union has some thoughts, and Korea and the U.S. have some thoughts. So what's going to happen? So what happens is we divide it along the 38th parallel. So North Korea will belong to the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union's ideology. And South Korea, south of the 38th parallel latitude, will belong to the United States and will follow the United States' ideology and, and beliefs and economic theory. So they'll be communists and will become democratic capitalists. Well, what, what does Korea want? Korea says, uh, what do you mean you're dividing our country in half? We're Korea. We're not North Korea and South Korea. Let's just try to stay one Korea. And so North Korea decides we want one Korea. And so North Korea invades South Korea trying to make one Korea. And they will almost conquer the entire country. At that point, the United Nations steps in and prevents this war from getting worse and will push North Korea all the way back to the Chinese border. At that point, China doesn't like us knocking at their door. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're getting a little too close for comfort. So Mao Zedong and the communists, they jump in and they push it back south of Seoul. And then eventually we settle, well, at this point, Douglas MacArthur, hero from World War II in the Philippines, and I will not, uh, I will return, or I shall return. He says, let's just nuke them. Yeah, that's probably not going to play out well in national media when you're arguing with the president and telling him to nuke a country. So he gets fired. Eventually, we settle here at the DMZ, the Armistice Line, and this is where the line remains today. North Korea, South Korea, still divided. Cool story, bro. 1954, let's look at Guatemala. Let's look at some more crazy nonsense. We don't want the dominoes to spread. This domino's in our backyard. What if Mexico becomes communist? The next thing is going to be Texas is going to be communist. It won't be communist. So Guatemala, we've got this beautiful, rich farmland down here. Uh, a lot of people suffering, low-income individuals. And then you've got rich people in America who own all of the farmland. 
well, you probably see how this one's going to play out, can't you? So the government of Guatemala decides, you know what? And they're kind of communists. They're not extreme communists. They're more socialists. They have a minimum wage. Is that communist? Not really. But they have socialist programs, we would say. They're very involved in the economy. How do we say that? The Guatemalan government is involved in the economy. This isn't a mixed government. This is not a free market government run by the Guatemalan government. It's more towards command. And they will command that this farmland is given to these low income poor people. Well, guess what? The rich people in America, this was their land. They didn't agree to it. They were compensated. They were paid, but they didn't want to sell their land. If you don't want to sell your house, the government can't make you sell your house. Even if you're like, oh, cool, $200,000 for my house. That's awesome. But you know what? I kind of needed that house. I wanted to keep that house. I didn't want the government to steal the house from me, even if they're paying me. I didn't want to sell it. Well, it doesn't matter because the Guatemalan government's basically leaning towards communist light and they're going to make the decisions of what they want to do. Well, the Americans are not very happy about this. And so we will insert the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, the spies who go around the world and even in our country. So the CIA, for the most part, we would all agree that the CIA is messing with other governments. They're going around spying, telling lies, deceiving, disrupting other countries. We all know that they've been doing this. Well, we recently, we probably have all known that they do it in America. We know that they've been involved in doing the same thing, uh, disrupting our own government. Now it's becoming pretty common and popular, and, and it's in the news every day, the, the, the tactics of the CIA and of our own intelligence agencies of disrupting our own government. This is what they do. This is their job. And so they see this happening and say, no, 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 this can't happen. We need to protect our American assets. So they will train soldiers, but not American soldiers. They'll train some Guatemalan soldiers, send in the soldiers, attack the Guatemalan government, overthrow the Guatemalan government, institute a new dictatorship. So our CIA will send in soldiers, basically wipe out their government and institute, institute a new government that wasn't elected, a totalitarian dictatorship. Wait a second, wait a second. We're, we're trying to stop the dominoes and we don't want the dominoes to spread communism and totalitarianism totalitarianism. That's the goal. And yes, we did it. We stopped the dominoes in Guatemala. We prevented the spread of communism. We prevented the spread of totalitarian dictatorships. Good job, CIA. But wait a second. Didn't the CIA just basically create a totalitarian dictatorship? Yeah, but we stopped communism. We stopped communism. Yeah, but this isn't democracy. Aren't we supposed to spread democracy? Wasn't the plan of the Truman Doctrine, if we get democracies all across the world, then there's going to be more peace. We just intentionally killed a democracy, and we killed that democracy because, well, they were communists. Which is it? Are we pro-democracy? Are we capitalists? What are we doing? Is it really all just about the money? Is it all about the power with the CIA then and today? Pretty shady stuff, but let's get even shadier, folks. The Middle East, 1941 to 1953. Iran has oil. We, America, own Iran's oil. We are making money off of their oil. In 1953, the Iranian people vote. They elect Mosendek, and Mosendek says, you know what? That oil under our ground in our country, that is ours. Maybe we should own it. Maybe we should make money off of it. So he kicks out the American oil companies, nationalizes their own oil, and says, hey, we're going to make money off of our own oil instead of other people taking our oil. Doesn't seem that extreme, doesn't sound that crazy, but of course the CIA, the American government, and the American businesses don't like it. And hey, what does the CIA do? They go into other countries, they disrupt, they destroy, they overthrow. That's their job. And they even do it in our own country, apparently. Recently, our own intelligence agencies have decided that, you know, let's overthrow our own government. Probably this video is probably going to get taken down now. They're, they probably have me bugged right now. They're, are they listening in on the computer? Where are the, where's the microphone? Oh, wait, it's my own microphone. Oops. So we will get rid of Mosendek, throw him in prison, because guess what? You, you, stole the, uh, you stole the oil that we stole from you, so we're going to steal it back. Wait a second. You stole the oil that we stole from you, so we're going to say yes. And we're going to put the Shah back in power. The Shah kind of was a little Western. He was pro-education. He had some beliefs that we agreed to. But as always, he was corrupt like everyone else we backed. We will back anybody. We will back Satan as long as he's anti-communist. It's crazy. Like, oh, the devil. We can't be behind the devil. But guess what? He's willing to fight some communists. All right, sign him up. We're behind you, Satan. Get behind you, Satan. However that works. All right, so we, we back the Shah, and then we bring our oil back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guess what? The people weren't happy. And in 1979, Iran has a revolution, and they basically kick the Shah out. He flees the country. At that point, they go even 
crazier and we push them in this direction. We push them to the brink. We push them to the edge via the CIA. And so the, they realize what America's doing. They realize the nasty stuff we're doing and they say, we're done with it. And we're, the, the Ayatollah takes over and they become an extreme theocracy and they become the problem that they are today. They, we push them in the direction that they are today. Probably could have prevented all this. When you look at a lot of the mess in, in, in Iran today and all the struggling, all the suffering that happens in that country because of economic sanctions under the last four or five administrations, it's our fault. We've done this. And hey, in the end, we lost the oil anyway. Cuba. So you might remember the Spanish-American War and our plan was to go into Cuba, free the Cubans and leave. Just kick the Spanish out of Cuba and let Cuba be Cuba. We never did that. Instead, we went into Cuba and set up factories and businesses and made money off the sugar plantations and American companies got rich. Even though the dictator Batista was doing some pretty nasty stuff, didn't matter. He he wasn't a good guy, but he was our, I mean, he was a bad guy, but he was our bad guy. And Batista did what the American corporations wanted. He did what the American businesses did, wanted. He did what the American government wanted. He didn't do what the Cubans wanted. He was terrible to his people. He had a terrible country for the, the peasants and the low income, but for the rich, they were doing awesome. Hey, hey, bad guy, but he's our bad guy. Well, eventually the people start to rise up under Fidel Castro and Fidel Castro leads a revolution to overthrow this brutal dictator and to create more of an equal system of government. Eventually Batista's gone and Castro will take over. And when Castro takes over, he kicks out the U.S. businesses. Oh, that's a mistake, right? We probably would have dealt with your revolution. We could have, we could have worked with you if you would have worked with us. You want to overthrow Batista, that's fine. Just as long as you keep the system going and help out the American businesses. He doesn't do that. And so we say, fine, you're going to do your thing. Well, you're not going to trade with us. Good luck surviving Cuba when you don't have the U.S. to buy and sell goods from. Well, at that point, the Soviet Union steps in and says, oh, we'll be your friend. We'll be your huckleberry. And so now all of a sudden Castro is a communist. Now, first of all, let's not make Castro a hero. He murdered millions of people. He did a lot of terrible, I don't know, yeah, I would say hundreds of thousands of people. He targeted people. He discriminated against people. He did a lot of brutal, savage things. So let's not put him as a hero revolutionary. And revolution is people die and innocent people die. People are dem uh, discriminated against and persecuted based on their beliefs, ideas, or views. So he's not necessarily a good guy even before the Soviet Union makes him this friend. All right, well, that's a problem. So the Bay of Pigs of Asia in 1961 is this plan. All right, we got to get into Cuba. We got to take Castro out. And so we can't have communism in our backyard. Remember, the dominoes are falling. And that's a domino in our backyard. It's Florida. Miami's going to come communist. So Central Intelligence Agency is going to train a bunch of soldiers to invade Cuba. Boom, we'll take him out real quick. Uh, problem is it doesn't go as planned. It's a disaster. They say, hey, we got to call in some airstrikes to support our guys. And the president says, no. We're not starting World War III over some stupid plan by the CIA. Sorry, CIA. And you know, I want to make good of this. This is one where it tells the CIA, no, I'm not calling an airstrike. This is your mess. I'm not getting involved with it. Meanwhile, the CIA is like, oh, you're going to pay for this. And he did. Cuban Missile Crisis 1961, the Soviet Union stores some missiles in our backyard in Cuba. And they can basically light us up from anywhere they want. And we tell them, take the nukes out. And they tell us, no, we're not going to take the nukes out. This is a chess match. It's brinksmanship. It's a game of chicken. Who's going to blink first? And so take the nukes out. No, no. So what we do is we set up a blockade. We basically, we're going to keep you from getting any goods into the Cuban people. We're going to starve them out. We're definitely going to prevent you from storing any more nukes. And the Cubans are right here. And here we are with our blockade and the Soviet Union is coming right for us. And they chicken out. They go back to their last minute. And so, yay, we win the game of chicken. Awesome. And eventually they say, all right, we'll take the nukes out. Cool. Right. America's awesome. We're the best in the world. Yeah, 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 we won this one. Our president's great. Yeah, 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 America. Well, the secret is, we'll find out later on, that a part of this deal, they didn't just take the nukes out of Cuba for no reason. We told them secretly, hey, you know those nukes that we have in your backyard? You know the nukes that we have stored in Turkey in your backyard? We'll take those out. But this has got to be a secret. So it looks like, wee, 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 America's awesome because we kept this stuff top secret. If the American people would never like, no, we took our nukes out as well, well, maybe it wouldn't have been as much of a victory. But it was a victory for us because people didn't know about that until today that, oh, yeah, that's we didn't bully them. We didn't exert our power on them and say, you got to get your nukes out or else. And they did it. And we're awesome and tough. No, it's, all right, you take your nukes out and we'll take our nukes out. All right, fair, even, equal. Well, that's not what happened. That's not what we do publicly. And that will cost Khrushchev his job. Vietnam, another country. Japan gets kicked out. But actually, rewind the clock before Japan. So French Indochina, the Chinese for a thousand years tried to invade Vietnam. 
the Fr French kick the Chinese out. And so the Vietnamese are fighting the French. And then when the French are done with the, the Vietnamese are now fighting the Japanese. So if you're keeping scoring at home, they're fighting China for a thousand years. They're fighting for the French. They're fighting the Japanese. And then they finally kick out the Japanese like, yeah, 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 yeah. And actually when they kick out the Japanese, they have a moment where they read the Declaration of Independence. The leader of Vietnam read the Declaration of Independence saying, yes, we finally done it. We're a free country. Thank you, America. We are free. And then the French come back and start bullying them again. Uh, would someone just leave the Vietnamese people alone? Eventually, they kicked the French down to South Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh in the north versus Sh or Go Den Diem in the south. Well, the Vietnamese, just like North Korea, they want to be one Vietnam. They've been fighting for a thousand years. They don't want to deal with all this nonsense. We want one Vietnam. We're tired. We want one Vietnam. 54 to 1975 is going to be a Vietnamese war. Ho Chi Minh is going to ally with the Soviet Union, not because he is communist, not because he's a brutal, dictatorial, totalitarian autocrat. It's a lot of nouns right there and adjectives. But he needs an ally. He needs resources in order to fight the war. So he goes to the Soviet Union because America wouldn't help the guy. And we go with the guy that's corrupt, but because he's their enemy. So we go with this guy. How many times are we going to do this? Oh, we like him because he's a very smart, intellectual, democratic, capitalist. No, he's pretty corrupt, but he's this dude's enemy. And that guy's our enemy. So the enemy of our enemy is our friend. It's not working out. But let's just keep rolling with it. Robert McNamara will be one of the guys in charge of this war. He makes a big mistake, but here we go. I'll give you an idea. I'm not going to go too deep into Vietnam today. You can go deep by watching videos. Mr. McNamara, now this is from the former minister of Vietnam. You must never have read a history book. If you had, you'd know we weren't pawns of the Chinese or the Russians. McNamara, didn't you know that? Didn't you know that? I'm not doing a very good job of reading. Don't you understand that we have been fighting the Chinese for thousands of years? We were fighting for our independence, and we would fight to the last man, and we were determined to do so, and no amount of bombing, no amount of U.S. pressure would ever have stopped us. This is not about communism. This is not about totalitarian spreading. This is not dominoes. What's going on here? What you walked into was a civil war that we've been fighting for a thousand years. This is not about you. This is not about communism. We have been fighting for a thousand years for our independence and we were never going to stop. And you walked into this mess and you fought this mess for 20 years and you got nothing out of it. Maybe if you would realize, oh wait, this is all just a civil war. Maybe we should just let them fight and get out of it. Yeah, maybe. Instead, we got launched into the Vietnam War that we actually set rules that made it impossible for us to win. We bombed a lot, Operation Rolling Thunder, but we didn't bomb enough because we had strict rules about how we could bomb. If we had those strict rules in World War I and World War II, probably wouldn't have had the outcome that we did. But we enforced these certain rules. Another example, we weren't allowed to go into other countries. Well, the North Vietnamese were not playing by the rules. They've been fighting for a thousand years. If they play by the rules, they're going to lose to us. We are a superpower. The only way the North Vietnamese or the Viet Cong could beat us is by breaking the rules. And they did. They often traveled in another country so that they could sneak past us. We were following all the rules while they were. Who do you think is going to win? The guy's cheating or the guy's playing by the rules. It's very hard to beat someone who's cheating. And that's what they did. And that's how they were so successful. We're talking about tunnels. This is a crazy war, dangerous war, lots of protests, very interesting, lots of videos, movies, books to read about the Vietnam War. Check it out. So there it all is for you today. Proxy War, Domino Theory, Korean War, CIA, Cuba, and the Vietnam War. A little bit longer today, but hey, it's all right.